Okay. In growth series one, you have attempted many multiple choice questions, but you are not sure about answers. So this video is all about the keys of those MCQs along with the concept in reference to those questions. So let's start learning. Hi, I am Dr. Triya Virani Malde, pediatrician and consultant neonatologist, and I'll be your guide for pediatric subject. Please do subscribe my channel because lot is going to happen on this ch channel for pediatrics and give like to this video. Question number one: Embryonic period is up to your options were a eight weeks, b ten weeks, c twelve weeks, or it is d six weeks. So correct answer is option a eight weeks. For ease of your remembering you have to remember number 8 also starts with spelling 8 and embryo also start with e so e e embryo 8 question number 2 was adolescent age starts at the age of option a 7 year b 10 year c 14 year or it is d 17 year so correct answer is option b 10 years you have to remember this slide for it 10 to 19 years, nothing to understand, just to remember this number that 10 to 19 years stands for adolescent age. Question number 3 was, WHO defines adolescent age between 10 to 19 years, 10 to 14 years, C 10 to 25 years or it is 9 to 14 years. Again if you remember the range, the correct answer is option A 10 to 19 years, you need to just remember this slide. Have a picture mind photo that 10 to 19 years stands for adolescent age. Question number 4 was mid adolescent age is the age between A 10 to 14 years, B 14 to 17 years, C 17 to 19 years or it is D 14 to 18 years. So correct answer is option B 14 to 17 years. This is the mid-adolescent age, you have to just remember that 14 to 17 is for the mid-adolescent age. Question number 5 was, fetal growth is maximally affected by, your options were A, insulin, B, thyroxine, C, growth hormone and D, cortisol. Let's discuss this one by one and answer would be like with elimination, the correct answer is A, insulin. So if you take a thyroxine, it does not have any effect on the linear growth, it has effect on the skeletal maturation. If you take a glucocorticoid, it has effect on the maturation of organs but does not have any effect directly on the growth. If you take a growth hormone, we all know that it does not have any effect on the fetal growth. So we are left with only insulin and it has really effect on the tissue accretion and differentiation. That's why infant of diabetic mother, gestational diabetic play very important role because in those mothers there will be a up and down level of the insulin. So for us it is very important to know that insulin has a maximum effect for the fetal growth in intrauterine period. Question number 6 was which hormone is not essential for the fetal growth in intrauterine period? Your options were A insulin, B thyroxine, C growth hormone or it is D cortisol. If you see the answer, the correct answer is growth hormone. Thyroxine has some effect on the growth. Glucocorticoid also has an effect on the growth. If you take a insulin, it also has an effect on the growth. Only hormone which does not have any effect on the growth is a growth hormone. Though it is saying a growth, but it does not have any effect in the growth. So catch was intrauterine period. Please do not miss that terminology in the question because it is very important for us to know that it is for intrauterine period. Question number 7 was, hormones mainly responsible for skeletal maturation of the fetus is A. Testosterone, B. Thyroxine, C. Estrogen or it is D. Growth Hormone. We all know the correct answer, it is option B. Question number 7, option B is a correct answer, thyroxine. It has effect on the skeletal maturation, deficiency of this hormone will cause Retardation of skeletal maturation. Glucocorticoid doesn't have any effect on the skeletal maturation. If you take a growth hormone, it does not do anything with the bone growth. And again, insulin also doesn't have any effect on the bone growth. The next question is, postnatally when the growth velocity is maximum, your options were A, first year, B, second year, 
C, seventh year, or it is D, tenth year. For the answer, you need to remember that curve. The correct answer is in the option A in the first year. Remember this that postnatally after the birth for first few months the velocity is maximum. And how does we can prove it? If you take a length in a first year, the baby in increase by length by 25 cm, which is the maximum of whole lifespan. So the maximum velocity is in the first year because maximum growth of the baby is going to happen in this first year. Question number 9. The maximum age for the growth of lymphoid tissue is 2 to uh, the options were A 2 to 3 years, B 4 to 8 years, C 7 to 11 years or it is D 11 to 14 years. You do not need to understand it. You have to just remember it. It is between the 4 to 8 years. The maximum growth is found of the lymphoid tissue. Question number 10. That 90% of the brain growth is achieved by the options were A, second year, B, third year, C, fifth year or it is D, tenth year. For that also you have to remember this table. Your correct answer is option B. So for question number 10, option B was the correct answer by third year. For that you have to remember the statistics by one year, 72% of the adult size and by three year, 90% of the adult size is achieved for the brain growth. That is all about the MCQ keys for part 1. I hope you all understood well, learned well and now you are going to remember it also. I would like to know your suggestion for the improvement of my topic and I would like to know that what else you would like to learn from me. For part 2, we are going to have a assessment of the growth in a form of height, weight, head circumference, mid-arm circumference and chest circumference in a very easy way with lots of pictures and lots of graphs. So please subscribe if you have not yet subscribed my channel. Stay connected with me till that time. Stay safe and study smart. Take care of yourself. Bye.